In July 2012, five of us went on an international development tour to Peru. The tour is organized by the Alberta Council for Global Cooperation. We spent two weeks visiting projects that are done in partnership between Alberta-based organizations and their Peruvian partners. I'm very excited to be able to get this opportunity in order to see different cultures in South America. In Peru, I don't know, I mean, I hope to see <laughs> the, the crazy different culture and I hope to see what, you know, what kinds of good people are doing. I haven't really seen the world, so all I know is Canada and Calgary, so I feel pretty excited, pretty nervous. My expectations for my group would be to be open-minded and to stay positive, I think. I think that my whole perspective on our lifestyle will be different. My reference has been telling me that, you know, this kind of experience is something that changes you and you come back a, a different person and um, I, I hope so and I, I think it, it, it feels like it already, so I would hope so. <laughs> Go. Just got into Lima, Peru. It's 8.47. Feels like it's midnight. I'm so tired. Our first day in Peru was spent on a long bus ride to the north of Lima. It was beautiful driving through the mountains and seeing like all the locals, how they live. It's, looks like a hard lifestyle. We spent an afternoon touring the city of Huaraz, soaking in as much of the culture as we could. On our second day, we met up with five Peruvian youth from the Ancash region of Peru, and we'd be together for a week. <laughs> Despite the language barrier, we were able to learn so much from our new friends about the region, its people, and some of the struggles that the indigenous people of the Andes face. At first, I thought it was going to be very difficult, especially with the language barriers, the cultural differences, but it turns out it wasn't so, because both groups were willing to try extremely hard to get past those barriers. Here we are in front of the uh, Yurak Yaku Community Project and Education Center uh, by, the, by Sambria and the Andean Alliance. Sambria International Development Society is an Alberta organization that partnered with the Andean Alliance, a group of 50 families in the region. Working together, they've built a community center, a library with computers for public use, and a preschool. Estamos trabajando muy bien con los voluntarios que vienen a apoyarnos y ya ahora ya tenemos el 60% de avanzado, ya nuestros niños ya estudian acá, ya saben leer, ya saben este, hablar un poco de inglés, ya muchas cosas con nuestros niños de 5 a 6 años. Muy bonito. The community is expanding the center with a guide training project where young Peruvians can be trained to guide tourists through the region's stunning landscape. We spoke with some people who are benefiting from the project. Beyond the obvious benefits of the preschool and community center, each family that commits to the project earns an income by working on the expansion of the center and having reduced schooling fees for their children. Our Peruvian friends took us on a day hike. They taught us about the flora and fauna found in the mountains, the region's vibrant culture, and the strong sense of community that the people of the highlands share. We also learned that these people are witnessing climate change just like we are. See them in the valley there? I mean, well, that is the valley between that big mountain and that big mountain. Yeah. Um, there's big glaciers, like long, long ago. And like how they are in like, like Alberta, the, the glaciers are receding. Same thing happened there. But as you can see now, that they're all the way back there. And that big hole that is left, that's where it used to sit. It's horrible. As our journey continued, the more we learned. And the more we talked to community members, our Peruvian counterparts, and amongst ourselves, the more we felt changed by this experience. 
This trip has been crazy. It's been such an eye opener in so many different levels. I don't think that I'll go back to Canada and look at all this stuff that I've witnessed the same. I don't think I'll look at anything the same really ever again. On day six, we all went on an overnight hike into a national park where we set up camp in a beautiful valley. And afterwards, we played both Peruvian and Canadian games, which we taught each other. And the Peruvian kids taught us blind chicken, where one person is blindfolded and they have to try to catch another person. <laughs> These last couple of days have been crazy and amazing, and we've gotten a lot closer with the the Peruvian kids and we're all together and hopefully we can do something good here and hopefully we can continue to do good things here and in this community and for all these people who have so graciously let us into their homes and into their communities and and you know just a, a, with a smile on their face and and you know expecting nothing in return and, and uh, it's I guess it's, it's given me new hope Buenos dias! Oh. No way! It's too early for me. Oh, we just woke up from our sleep in our tents, which was a long night for some of us. It was pretty cold. We went on our hike from our campsite, and it's beautiful. We are here at the Laguna, they call it. <laughs> that, that's about it, if you can hear me. We moved on to the village of Vicos, where an organization called Response works with local families to provide traditional homestays to tourists. The project offers families the opportunity to share their culture while earning an income from ecotourism. Chance is gonna try throwing the the, the, the stone with the ancient Incan weapon. Lo que nosotros hemos formado una asociación que somos un grupo de ocho familias que estamos dispersos en nuestras casas, siete casas, siete familias con casas campesinas y un guía especializado guía del campo. We're here in Vicos, we're eating our first meal, and I'm about to try some rocoto, <laughs> which is apparently an extremely spicy pepper. And Yesenia is just laughing at me because I think she knows no. that it's going to be awful. No. <laughs> oh. My mouth, my lips really hurt. My lips hurt quite a lot. We ate meals with our host families, spent our days learning about their lives, and tried our best to help with chores, but quickly learned how difficult those tasks are when you don't have the knowledge or skills to do them. We helped to make stoves out of adobe bricks, rocks, and mud. It, it was a lot of work, and I, I, I felt bad because I didn't really have any skills I could use to help further the project. I'm not super strong, and my experience in construction is building a gumball machine in uh, in wood shop in grade seven. On our final day in Vicos, we gathered for a traditional Highland ritual, a pachamanca. A pachamanca is an oven made of rocks that is stuffed with chicken, beef, beans, and a whole lot of potatoes. The community gives thanks to Pachamama which means Mother Earth, for the bounty of food. The Pachamanca really emphasized the strong sense of community that exists in the Highlands, and we were fortunate to experience that. After the Pachamanca, the time came to part with our Peruvian friends. After seven days of laughing, learning, dancing, and growing, we were leaving the Highlands. Yesterday was uh, the last 
time we had to spend with the Peruvian youth. And I miss them today. And I, I, I don't really want to show emotion because I'm too manly. The end was really sad because we probably won't ever see them again, but we're going to try to stay in contact with them over email and Facebook as much as we can because we don't want to lose our new best friends. On day 12, we were in Chincha to visit Rainbow of Hope for Children, an organization that has a number of projects in the region. Our first stop was at the Santa Rosa School, where we were enthusiastically greeted by the whole school and their marching band. Rainbow of Hope for Children had helped to build a new school after the old one was damaged. What we have here is the old school. But Five to six years ago there was an earthquake and it totally like destroyed the structure of it and it's like it's not safe to go in there, I guess, for the kids. So this is their um, new school. It's way better than the old school, but nice effort for the old school. <laughs> Next, with the entire school in tow, we walked through the community of Santa Rosa and we were invited into many people's homes to see their roofs. Rainbow of Hope has been working in Santa Rosa since 2007, when a devastating earthquake ruined all of the homes in the region. The project uses sustainable local resources, and community members help build roofs so that families have adequate shelter while they rebuild the walls of their homes. In the evening, we visited the local adult education center in Chincha, where working adults can improve their education, although on this evening, it was used for a big party. We spent our final day in Peru in the capital city of Lima, visiting projects by Cuso International and their southern partners. We toured a youth employment center, where young people from Lima come to gain the skills needed to land a job. Resume writing, access to computers, a large job bank, and an opportunity to connect with employers are all offered here. We then visited Manuela Ramos, a Peruvian organization that supports women who have been victims of violence. They provide access to legal support as well as medical and sexual health resources. After two amazing weeks in Peru, it was time for us to go. We weren't thrilled about our journey coming to an end, but it was time for us to say our goodbyes. Julie, what are you most sad about? Leaving. What are you most sad about the fact that we're leaving? Because we don't get to go back, like our adventure's over. I don't know, there's so much I'm gonna miss, all you guys. All these experiences. The ACGC Change Your World Youth Leadership Tour to Peru turned out to be a more powerful experience than any of us expected. Once back in Alberta, we had a debriefing session and the importance of our shared journey had time to sink in. This really was a life-changing trip, even though going into it I wasn't really sure of what I was doing, but now I've come out with an understanding and more knowledge than I could have ever imagined that I would have gotten. You learn so much from actually traveling and seeing how other people live, and you learn a lot about yourself too. From this experience, I've definitely been looking at things with a really different light. Um, the little things that you take for granted, I don't anymore. Things that changed in my perspective is like how I view the world and like we have a lot to contribute back to Peru, like just to Peru and like other parts of the world, but we choose just to like live our days and it's like it's like selfish. When it comes to international development there isn't just one aspect to it. There's environment, there's sustainability, there's gender equality, there's religion plays in a factor about what it is, there's politics, economics. And I got a chance to learn a little bit about all of them, which is amazing. You don't get that opportunity in, in a classroom setting. The experience that we had can influence more people than just us five. And so um, hopefully um, we can you know, show other people what it's like and give other people that experience through our eyes, and through our stories, and, and um, hopefully influence a whole other group of people and a whole other group of younger people. Mm -hmm.